Hi, I'm Bridie Shepherd, and on the Eco Show today, I am on top of the world in Coffs Harbour. Have you heard about ecotourism? It's the process of being eco-certified to be environmentally and sustainably minded in business. I am super, super stoked to be a tourist today. I'm gonna to do a little bit of paddle boarding, a little bit of bike riding, and check out this incredible view. Let's have a look. It can be difficult to know how to be an environmentally sustainable consumer at the best of times, but it's especially tricky when we're heading out for a holiday. While ecotourism as a concept usually just means visiting a natural environment, a select few regions across the country have taken things into their own hands and become eco-certified destinations. So what does this mean? It means the region and the businesses within it have undergone a rigorous review to ensure they are taking real, tangible action to enhance and protect our natural environment and are honouring cultural heritage. All of this is administered by Ecotourism Australia, a not-for-profit organisation established in 1991 and recognised by the Global Sustainable Tourism Council. The team at Ecotourism Australia work with these regions and build their capacity to support sustainable systems. The Coffs Coast, situated on Gumbungia country, was the second region in Australia to undertake the process and become a certified destination. So we just had to go and check it out. I've just arrived at the Botanic Gardens here and it's so exciting to know that even this area has been eco-certified. So that means they've been paying attention to the energy conservation, the way that water is managed here, but also lots of cultural aspects. I'm going to meet with Fiona from the local council and she's going to tell me some more about ecotourism in the area. Coffs Harbour City Council spearheaded the rigorous 14-month certification process. The Coffs Coast is geographically unique and it's one of the only places in New South Wales where the Great Dividing Range meets the Pacific Ocean. The topography of the region is quite diverse, making it one special place to visit. What exactly is eco-certification? What does it mean when a business is you know, getting this yep. to give approval? Sure, so for a business, it's about how they operate. So we, Council has actually done a destination certification. So what that means is that we have been able to showcase that our destination is following some global standards around sustainability and also around protection of nature. So when people come here, they know that they're getting a real experience and it's something that we're caring for into the future. Mm. So all of Coffs Harbour has a certification? So Coffs Harbour as a destination has a certification and then we have seven businesses that actually have their individual certification and another three that are almost completed their certification as well. Mm. Have you gotten a lot of positive feedback about this, this yep, whole Yeah, we certainly enterprise? have. So, um, you know, it's something that has been, I guess, something that we've aimed towards for a little while. We've always had a nature-based tourism strategy. Nature tourism is a really important part of what we do, obviously, with some of the surrounds that we're in. But also what we find is that, you know, people have kind of gone, that's great that you've taken that one step further. So we're the first destination to be certified in New South Wales. So that obviously has given us a little bit of a, a pull and a, a bit of that, um, recognition in that regard mm -hmm. but it just means that we're able to kind of I guess showcase that what we're doing is something that's really significant so and people have responded well to that our community is a community that really values the landscape in which they live they want to make sure that that's looked after and completed properly and so it's been really good to showcase that council is actually part of that process as well Mm. Was it a difficult process to do? Was it's everyone a, on board? It's or? a long process. <laughs> so yeah. There's about over 100 criteria that you have to meet to become a certified destination. And we did that in quite a short period of time. So getting everyone together was one of those things that we needed to just ensure was done properly. Looking at national parks, state forests and how we interact both with internally within council but with each of those departments as well. So I guess difficult is probably not the word, just time consuming. So quite lucky that one of my team members was able to dedicate quite a bit of time to making sure that process worked well. Mm. And when we're talking about you know, environmental sustainability, yep. 
Are we also talking about cultural elements? How does culture and yep. you know the indigenous population's culture come into sure. play? Sure. So, I mean, it, sustainability is more than just environmental sustainability. It is about sustainability of both where we live, but also how we live and what we do. So, important aspect of one of the um, pillars, I guess, of eco certification is around cultural identity and how that's used, and then also looking at environmental sustainability and how we continue to manage our environment into the future. Um, um, we've got quite significant Indigenous tourism components here in Coffs and we're quite lucky in that we work very well with them. There's a quite a good integration across our community um, around Indigenous involvement, so we use language quite regularly. Most of the names of our tourism places, we use the Indigenous name that goes with that. So there is a growing opportunity for that within the area. And I'm even noticing that there's a lot of Indigenous right. names yes, that yep. we're literally walking past now, yes, which yep, is incredible. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. So one of the activities that we've done is we've put together a little um, holiday activity book for children and it's all done by QR code so they can listen and interact and one of the things asks about um, how do you say certain names in Kumbanya language which is our local indigenous language so the kids can look at a picture press a button and they hear it spoken in English and then spoken in Kumbanya so we've got words for banana and butterfly and things like that in there. It's just so cool to me that that you're doing work that's not just about the environment but understanding it as a really holistic concept yeah. that involves people as well. People yes. aren't separate from the environment no. but they're deeply integrated. 100% and I think that's a really important part of I guess what the Indigenous culture teaches us is it's around language, it's around people and it's also around the land that they're part of. Fantastic. Thank you so much for all the amazing work you're doing. That's okay, thank you. So, now that I'm all caught up on how the area became eco-certified, it's time to visit some local businesses to hear their stories. I'm heading to Coffs Creek to meet with Ronan from Wajana Yam Adventure Tours. Wajana Yam is an Indigenous-run social enterprise that takes paddleboard tours around the magnificent waterways of the Coffs Coast. Through their tours, Wajana Yam ensures the continuation of the transfer of intergenerational cultural knowledge. And they were the first business to become certified in the region. Can you tell me a bit about the tours that you do? So we do tours at Red Rock, Mooney Creek, uh, Coss Creek, where we're standing right now. Our favourite main one is up at Red Rock. Uh, we idolise um, language on the tours, cultural sites along the way, um, a bit about the area where our old people would go down and they'll pull out huge jewfish, they'll stand, uh, be hanging from shoulder height to the ground and all Huge. about the area. Huge. Just about. Amazing. And we're on such beautiful land. Can you tell me a little bit about the significance of this land? So Coffs Creek we're in right now, our old people would come down here and they would catch a lot of mullet. So this is chicken to the sea, our mullet, where they would be running up creek to incubate eggs and they would catch them on the way out uh, down the mouth of the creek with nets and with uh, dolphins, using dolphins as a way of catching them. Amazing. And we're going to be exploring today in probably one of the most environmentally minded uh, modes of transportation, paddleboarding, yeah. right? Yes. Uh, good fun. A little bit of a workout, uh, test yourself on the water as well. Rad, do you mind giving me a bit of a tutorial? Sure thing. So obviously you've got your tail and the nose of your board, you've got a handle. Either side of this one is where you want your feet, the most buoyant part of the board. Um, and you switch over to your paddle here, you see how you've got a flat side and a curved side. So you've got your palm coming over, holding on like so. There's a little latch here. And you've got a little big lettering, little lettering, small lettering at the front coming through like so, switching over each time. A little tip, when you're standing up, don't look at your feet, look at the tops of the trees. Okay, helps okay, you, okay. Helps you out a lot. Um, will I be standing on this today? Yes, I've never done will. this before. Okay, Just, all right. Uh, you can do it, it's like riding a bike. So you can stand up, sit down, do whatever you want on it. I'm terrified and very excited, simultaneously. It's only water you fall in, so it's all good.
paddleboarding to deep sea diving, I'm off to the harbour to chat with another business owner, Mike from Jetty Dive. Can you tell me a little bit about what Jetty Dive does? Yeah, well Jetty Dive's got two parts to the business, our diving obviously, um, but also in the whale season we do whale watching and an add on to that is whale swimming. That must be quite a rare experience to swim with whales. Yeah, it is, yeah. I mean, these are humpback whales, so they're pretty big. And it's only a, a certain time of the year when they just start to turn around and head south for the, uh, on their migration do we find that they're very inquisitive of boats. So they mug the boat as such, as they call it. Um, and we found if they're mugging boats, it means that uh, they could easily come up to snorkelers. So we tried it a few years ago. It worked really well. And then, uh, yeah, you know, since then we've been doing it at that certain time of the year um, with them. Yeah. Sounds like such an incredible business. So you're very connected to the environment, you're very connected to nature. Yep. You've become eco-certified recently, is that right? Yes, yeah, we, we've obtained an advanced um, certification actually. So it's a, uh, and my daughter did it, she worked hard at it to get there. Um, but yeah, we achieved it. And, We've been sort of eco-minded for a long time, it's just that we had to finish it off with the certification. Yeah. Did you need to change many things about your practice to get that certification? No, look, we, it, it was a good, it was educational for us in that we looked at what we've been doing and saying, well, are we doing it right or you know, can we change to do it? We didn't have to do a lot in that sense, we just had to document it more than anything. But it did make us think a bit more about you know, adding on things too. So uh, in the case of um, the power that we use at, uh, you know, in our shop, we've now gone solar. So it's, it's just made us think a bit more about uh, the eco side of it. Yeah, and I hear that you've got a really amazing new boat that's yeah, very Yeah, we, we run the, the boat we got last year. We, again, we sort of went to outboard boats because of the economy of them and obviously less fuel, less um, emissions and the likes of that. And this boat, even though it's got four motors, is still more efficient than the boat we had previously with two and the boat we had before that, which was a diesel. So it's, you know, it's sort of a all good for us. Have you found that your customers, your clients, your guests have responded well to the certification? It's interesting, you know, I believe there's more people uh, looking on the eco side of things. Yeah, it seems like there's quite a movement towards actually holidaying in a sustainable way. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's the case. Diving for us has always been that and you know we've been pretty careful on how we've approached our dive sites because they are sanctuary zones and and uh, we've almost become the protectors of the zones, you know, we'll make sure that there's no one fishing in them when we get there and the likes of that. But, but also on the practices that we do underwater, as far as, you know, maintaining good buoyancy to keep off the bottom, you know, to avoid any damage. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And are doing environmental and sustainable practices like this important yep. to you and your family? Like it sounds oh, like it's a family yeah. sort yeah. of philosophy. Yeah, I mean, look, when we first uh, started the business, uh, or took over the business 25 years ago, we, it was a change for us because we came out of the south where we actually took crayfish when we went diving. Uh, and to change uh, hats to uh, looking after the environment was a bit of a, a change for us. But yeah, it was a good change because we, sort of, we really do respect what we you know, use out there and want to keep it that way for as long as you know, it can, well, in fact, if we can improve it, it'd be much better. Yeah, hard to not care when you're literally swimming with whales. <laughs> yeah, well that's right. You know, for a lot of people they've said it's a uh, life-changing experience if you have a big whale swim right up next to you, which they, you know, they have a tendency to do when they're that curious. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for chatting with me today. I'll let you go back to whale watching. <laughs> okay, no worries. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. If you thought the Coffs Coast couldn't get any more adventurous, wait until I head into the hinterland. It may have been my first time paddleboarding today, but I'm a big fan of our next activity. I'm heading inland to do some mountain bike riding with the Woolgoola Mountain Bike Club. Scott, can you tell me a bit about the work you do? Yeah, so, well, basically we're a not-for-profit mountain bike club that's just been working with the community to, to build a trail network. You know, there was a beautiful forest and obviously mountain biking is a great way to engage a community in nature. and. Uh, and we've been working now for sort of three or four years to get to the point where we are today. 
And you're about to undergo eco certification, is that right? Yeah, yeah. So we've been working with Ashley and Coffs Harbour Council to work towards that. Obviously, what they've achieved in the last few years is amazing with the accreditation. And, and then we're going to work in with that. Obviously, a natural sport in a natural environment like this ties in perfectly. So the plan is to, to roll all this in with, uh, with all the other good work that they've already done. Yeah, incredible. And why is it important to make this an uh, eco-certified I think people just understand that it's, you know, the, the whole network and the whole premise behind it, it's, it's being in the nature. It's not, you know, manipulating it to be something else. You'll see today when we ride, like the trails are thin ribbons of single track that work in with the terrain. And, and, you know, you just get, you know, a lot of kids and people, they grow up around here, but they haven't been in this forest. And for them, it's really, you know, the, the lure of the, you know, adrenaline sport gets those kids engaged. But once they're in here, you know, they stop and, look around and sort of get immersed by the forest and it's contagious really. You know, we saw today when we first got up here, you know, there's a school group. So even now, you know, within the high school, you know, they've incorporated it in school sport and, you know, you see all these kids who are looking forward to Wednesday to go and ride, you know, a 20K loop. You know, you can't get them to run around the oval once, but you can get them to do 20Ks on a mountain bike. So it's just the bike's been a vehicle probably to get people in the forest. And also too, like the story, you know, we've worked really closely with the Garbi elders and the Gubangia people to, you know, understand what this area was and what the history in there is. So there's, from an educational standpoint, like once the kids particularly engage with the forest, you know, there's, there's such a broader story to tell. And particularly from a historical standpoint and pre-colonial standpoint, there's a, there's a lot of lessons. We've done a lot of walk on country when we were basically surveying this zone, like we wanted to make sure we weren't in areas that we shouldn't be, we weren't in areas of high sensitivity, that we weren't coming across artifacts and that we were preserving the history. And, you know, you spend a few hours walking this land with a Garby elder and, you know, it's an amazing experience. So we're looking to find ways to sort of bring the whole story in and the bike is the vehicle and it's fun. And, People travel for it and they enjoy it and it's a tourism product as well but it's also a lifestyle thing. So, so what does eco certification mean to you? Yeah I mean it's you know it shows that that's the reason that you're doing it right like that you are working in with nature and it's completely sustainable I mean there's there's so many examples of industry where you got to take 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 to create something but you know with something like this and having that framework to work in you know that the end product is sustainable for the long term you know there's thousands of thousands of wheels have already rolled these trails and thousands will again and the bush just continues to grow in around it and it's it's ongoing success is based on its natural beauty and to have that certification assures that we've got the framework to, to, to keep it that way. Mm. Do you find that people are starting to look towards uh, eco certifications when they, they're holidaying? Yeah, in time, I mean, you, know, you go back 20 years and the, the holiday concept was where can I put my deck chair under a tree and hear the ocean and read a book, right? Like those days are done. They hang out on the Pacific Highway and you look at the traffic and it's the stand-up paddleboard, it's the mountain bike, it's the surfboard. It's all of those things. So, and incidentally, those things are all, you know, participated in the natural environment. So people want this hub where they can go to where, yeah, I want to ride my mountain bike, but I want to surf in the morning and then I might go for a fish. So the towns that are embracing that through the eco certification or just embracing, you know, eco-tourism, nature-based adventure stuff, they're the towns that are going to have the sustainable tourism product. I mean, we've all got great beaches. The entire strip of Australia's got great beaches, but where are the places where you can take those toys, camp in one spot and, and use them? And those towns, you know, and we've seen it in Canada and we've seen it in New Zealand, and you know, we're not the first place to do this, but the topography of the Coffs Coast lends itself perfectly to it. So I think you'll find there's just more and more of these offerings and more and more people will come specifically to that place to do those things. So you're finding that, that people who are holidaying tourists are less passive than they were in the past and they want to actively engage with the environment but do so in a sustainable way. Yeah, and, they, you know, and they're conscious of that as well and they want to leave no trace but they want to experience the things while they're there. Now it's finally time to go for a ride. Okay, 
I've managed to like escape the creeper for a hot second so I can just keep doing this. Starting to get the hang of it. Everything Scott was saying about being light in the wrist, heavy in feet, it's starting to make sense. I'm starting to get a feel of it. I don't know what it is. I think this is just such an incredible way to see nature. I feel like I'm really getting to know the topography of the area. It's a whole different pace. It might be the exact opposite of paddle boarding, but it's such a thrill. 10 out of 10, would recommend. Cannot wait to get myself a mountain bike. Different pace to the camping and the hiking that I've been doing when out here. No, we wish walking is a really slow thing. This completely changes the pace. It's absolutely invigorating. All right, time to catch up with the crew. They're ready to leave and I'm still biking. Coffs Harbour is such a vibe. This kind of environmentally minded tourism is really representing a whole movement. One that really is respectful of both nature and culture. I think this is going to be the future of tourism. Catch you next time on The Eco Show.